Hello, Chris again. So we are going to model an NES controller. And before you start 3D modeling anything, you should kind of have a plan in your mind. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So here I have three reference images that show the front, the bottom, and uh, the plug for the controller. And I want to think about right now how I'm going to model this in terms of pieces. And most of the time, you don't want to model an object as one contiguous piece, particularly for the high poly model. And a good rule in general to follow is to model in pieces in the way that it is uh, put together in real life. So a part that is a different part or different material would be a separate piece and usually that's going to be a lot easier than it would be if you were to just model it all out of you know one cube or something and the main reason why this is is because let's say this button here right so this button essentially is a cylinder that has a bit of a divot um, or a you know hollowish point a uh, convex point that is being pushed in right here. So if I were to model a big cube for this and then get a circle out of a bunch of vertices and extrude it out, I'm going to have to have edge flow that supports these uh, cylinders for the buttons, right? And I'd also have to have edge flow for all these other buttons. So by the time I've extruded and model all of these buttons, the edges that support all of these buttons are going to be going everywhere, like all over the model and wrapping around the entire model. This is going to be making, this is going to make modeling other details extremely difficult um, because I'll have a ton of edges. So we always wanna work from simple to complex and start with the primary forms first, the forms that impact the silhouette the most. So I'm going to plan what, um, I'm going to plan the pieces uh, that I'll be modeling now. So this controller is split into two main pieces. If I look at this shot, the case or the shell for the controller is, you know, this front shell that houses all the buttons and then the back shell. And the back shell has all the screws on it uh, through the back. So this would be the first thing. So there's part number one. I might end up modeling this interior face uh, separate because I know I'm gonna have to put a bunch of holes in it and I don't want to um, have edges wrapping around the shell from this. So I'll say this is two, just everything that has this sort of Nintendo sticker and B and A. Um, the frame for the D-pad will be three. The D-pad itself, you know, there's another piece this frame for the select and start buttons I'll include in this model, uh, but the select and start buttons will be different parts and they're the same uh, shape and form. So I just have to model one of these and I can duplicate it over to the next one uh, to where it needs to go. And then same thing with the button, same model, uh, and I can duplicate it over. And then the frame for the button I'll model that separately and then I'll duplicate it over as well. I know I'll need to model the cord by itself. And then the back will be, um, what am I on, eight, nine? The back will be its own part. There's a bunch of screws back here. So I'll model one of those and then I'll duplicate those screws around. And then lastly, I need to do this plug. So what was I on? I was on 10. So I'll need to model the main housing for this plug. This part, even though it's technically molded and part of this, will be easier to model if it's separate. So 12. And then there are a bunch of you know, ends on the interior that I can model once and duplicate. So that will be my plan. In the next video, we'll take this reference and the top reference um, and begin modeling inside of Maya. We'll see you there.